Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to explain to you how I skipped, how I was able to skip 12th grade and go straight to college and not have to deal with SATs or even taking regents, which I did take redundantly. I took them, I didn't have to, but I did besides my English region, because in my school we took that in 12th grade and obviously I didn't go to 12th grade and I didn't even take my SATs yet and I, I know a lot of people take their SATs already starting in 11th grade but I was like always late for everything so I kind of was just like putting that on the back burner I kind of didn't really want to think about that but when I got my high school diploma I didn't realize that if you have all your regents done then you can transfer and then you wouldn't have to take that part of the regent so like I already took all of my math regions and all my science regions, all my history regions. So I could have not taken math, history, and science on my high school uh, equivalency exam. But that was like a long process that we didn't have time to do. So I was really in a rush to get my results quick, take the test quick, get into college quick because time was ticking. Like I was on a time thing. Anyway, so I took most of my regions. I never took my SATs and never had to deal with that. I don't know what the dealio is. Like, let's say I want to switch to Queens College. Let's say I get a bachelor's degree in, in Toro and then I want to go to a different college, like a graduate school. Do I have to have SATs for that or do I just have to have a bachelor's degree? Like, I don't know. If you guys know, like, totally let me know. So, would I have done it sooner if I could have? No, I wouldn't have because the stuff that I learned in 11th grade helped me take the test, helped me pass the test. In 11th grade, I learned chemistry, and chemistry is on the test. And I also learned trigonometry, which helped me... It didn't really help me, but... I learned U.S. history in 11th grade, and that was super helpful. U.S. history was on the test. So I would not have taken it sooner than 7th grade, than than 11th grade, because it would have been harder for me to study. Like, it was way easier just studying in school with my friends and having fun like that so yeah i would recommend taking it in 11th grade unless you want to study that huge task book all by yourself which is super daunting and looks scary i'd rather do that huge book over three years of high school and just kind of try to enjoy myself but really just like study whatever you need to know enjoy myself so i would have done it differently i would have enjoyed high school i would have just focused on the thing that i actually needed to know like studying history math like all the main topics that you actually need to know for life I would have just studied those and had fun and ignored the rest of the topics that I was taught. And yeah, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done things a little bit differently and really just taken care of myself. I didn't, but it's okay. It's fine. We're, I still had a great high school experience. No, I didn't. Okay, so the first question that I commonly get is how did you even find out about this? How did you even know that you were able to skip 12th grade? or take a test and then just magically go to college. So my cousin, he did this. He took a test and he went straight to college. He skipped a bunch of years of high school. So what my mother did was she went to his father, my uncle, and she asked him, yo, what's up? What did you do? Tell me everything. And so she hooked it up. She got this lady's number. Her name was and um, I live in Queens, so I had to travel to Brooklyn and ask them, hey, what's up? I found out about this. Tell me more about it. So then we went down there. And basically, this task test, it's this test called the task test. And you take the test, and then if you pass it, then it's basically a high school equivalency diploma. So you take the test, and then you get a high school equivalency diploma. And it's basically just like you went to high school but you didn't you got to skip a bunch of years now for this test you have to have a form of ID and you have to be 17 years old I didn't have that so we went got that so they were like oh you need an ID and I was like well I don't have one because I don't have a permit and I don't have a license my um, passport was expired as well and they were like well you can't use an expired passport so what I had to do was I had to get a New York City ID and so that's what I did. New York City ID is like super low key and no one really knows about it. I'll get more into that later when I go into the technical part. I think that's going to be part two. This is just going to be my personal story. So I got the ID and then um, we went there and I was like, hello, I have an ID. And they basically evaluated me. They needed to see if I needed to get classes, if I was smart enough to do it. Basically anyone can take the test 
immigrants, people who don't really know English that well, they can study for this test and get a high school diploma so that they can actually live a normal life in New York. So once I took the evaluation test, they were like, okay, buy this book. It's called the test book. I'll put a picture of it right somewhere around here. And you can actually find it in your library. I didn't know that until after, but whatever. Basically, studied. Study, study, study. Now I already knew history and English and science very well. The only subject I actually needed to study was math. So that's what I did. I studied math. I studied in school so i found that about, i found out about this even about this thing in the spring of 11th grade so in the spring of 11th grade i went and i got my id and i i took an evaluation test i got this book i started studying for math like crazy i did not have a life i even in class like during high school because i chose to stay in high school just in case i failed the test you know it's like a backup kind of a plan b so I was taking practice tests and studying math, math, math. And then eventually, once I felt like I was confident in my math, I went like back to Brooklyn and they evaluated me and I took practice tests. Basically, it's stimulus of what the test is going to be like. And I got, I took all the tests, obviously on different days because it's an eight hour test. And I got a 99% chance of passing every single part of the test. So there's a bunch of different parts. There's like three English parts, there's a history, there's a math, there's science, and I'm gonna go into like the details about what the test actually entails, like what you actually need to study in the technical part two of the video. So once I took the evaluation test, I was like, okay, cool, I'm ready to take the test. So then she was like, okay, now that you're ready to take the test, you need to go get accepted to a college. So I went to um, Turo, I got accepted, got a waiver, because you need a waiver, and I got the waiver, I brought it to Rosalie, and um, once she had the waiver, she was able to apply me for the test. So now I'm applied for the test, and I'm taking the test in two weeks. So over the span of two weeks, it was like, I just ended 11th grade of high school, and I'm going, I have two weeks until I'm taking this test. So I'm studying like mad, like no joke. Every, every single day I was in the library studying, taking practice tests, making sure that I would pass every single one of them. I was so focused and driven because I did not want to go back to high school. And we're gonna get into that later. It's gonna be like a whole video of why I left. This is just how I left. Now that I have taken all these practice tests, I am I feel prepared, I feel ready. So I go down there, I go to a different part of Brooklyn and I take the test. I get there a few hours before so I can start studying in like a Dunkin Donuts or something and I study and I study and I take the test and I feel confident like after each part of the test I would calculate all my points and I'm like I for sure passed this a hundred percent this entire time that we were waiting for results we were super pressed for time the lady said oh it's gonna take like six to eight weeks for you to get your results and I was like six to eight weeks well college starts in six and a half weeks so I need to know if I'm going to college my dream future next or like going back to the hellhole that I call high school I was panicking I was just like shaking and five and a half weeks like it was exactly six weeks and I go onto the portal and I look for my grades and I don't know what I'm doing so then I call this number that is like recommended on the website and I was like hey blah 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 help me out and they were like oh okay this is what you need to do and I did everything that they told me to do and I found my results, but before I did this, I when I took the test, I decided to get my proctor's name and her email and her phone number. So I, I emailed her and I was like, hey, um, my name's El Sassoon. I took the test by you. You were my proctor and I was just like hoping you could help me find my results. And she was like, okay, yeah, cool. So then she texted me, she emailed me back a picture of my results. Like, she's like, congratulations, you passed. I'm so proud of you, like you're amazing. And I was like, ah! Like, she didn't even give me instructions on how to find it. She just like sent me the link and she sent me photos and she was like, you passed. And I was like, oh my God, I freaking love you. Like, you're amazing. And she, she must have been a great person for doing that to me. And I was just so thankful that all these people on my journey to get my high school diploma were so helpful and awesome. And I'm going to start crying, but I'm so grateful for them. Wow, I didn't realize I was emotional about this topic, guys. But 
Well, okay, I can't, I can't cry. <sighs> I find out I passed literally a week before college starts, I've passed on the portal. Now, just because the grades are on the portal doesn't mean that my college got the grades. They didn't. And literally the day before Dylan left, my, the person who was like helping me out with getting into, into college, the one that basically stimulated all of this, she found it. And she was like, oh yeah, I see your grades right here. Now she's like, I see that you passed. And she's like, congratulations, this is great. But I didn't know if she registered it. So then while I was already in college, we had to go and be like, hey, is it registered? And they were like, yeah, you're good, you're registered. And your grades are good. And I was like, okay, hey, cool. And my high school diploma, like it was mailed to me. Like, so this is my high school diploma. Looks like that. Yeah, I'm super proud of myself for getting that. This came in the mail, like, this is irrelevant. I don't even need this piece of paper in the end. They just did it all online, which is great. Because this took so long to come. This took like, like two and a half months, maybe three months for it to finally show up. And um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm super grateful that I finally did that and was able to go to college and that all these people helped me. Like, I just wanna say thanks to my cousin to me, to Roseanne, to my mom for even setting this up, for this girl, Claire or something. I forgot her name, but for the woman that was my proctor that helped me find my grades to even tell me that I passed and just all these amazing people in my life. I'm just so grateful for them and for grateful for God to putting them in, in my life so that I can do it. And um, yeah, it was... Uh, a long journey that I would never change. It was really amazing and I'm so happy that I did it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next one, my loves.